That's enough of that. Uh, hey guys, how are you? Oh, Fantastic. Hello, hello. Are we uh, are we feeling we- 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 weirdy? Uh, yeah, Brian. Yes. Unless you're just gonna mute me again. <laughs> Don't mute the man. The man deserves to not be muted. Uh, uh, yeah. Sorry, I am not uh, there in the, uh, uh, the 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 studio. I I had a. I have a lot of phlegm that I'm trying to get up and uh, out of my system, so I figured better not to cough. Yeah, oh, around especially people. yeah, without a yeah. At least here you got you got your own cough button. I got a cough button. I got a little coffee. It's uh, <laughs> very cough related. <laughs> All right, so uh, video we'll keep it to uh, unless we have something to look at. Uh, this this pretty simple shot. Um, uh, let me let me dig up. I I ran across something in the news that I thought was pretty cool. Let me make sure I got that article. Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, let me goose this just a touch. Goose, goose, check, check, check. Okay, I'm sure it'll all balance out. You guys ready? Let's go. All right, ready? Three, two, one, and... Oh. Hello and welcome to the Weird Things Podcast. I'm Andrew Maine, joined by Brian Brushwood. It was very smooth. I, I see that we're still playing our game of accidentally starting exactly when somebody's taking a drink. <laughs> and Mr. Justin Robert Young. Hello, friends. Gentlemen, it's been uh, quite a week in AI, I'll tell you that. Uh, well, and I mm-hmm. have a feeling Name it's one... going to be that way. Forever. <laughs> uh, well, and, and, but before we talk about AI itself, can you name one awesome article in one of my favorite publications that was published in the last week or so? I read a really cool magazine article in Wired about red light therapy. Oh, go, all right. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, does red light therapy actually do anything? Yeah, apparently it does. Apparently it does. Uh, um, I man, hope so because I, I, uh, my otherwise eyes. my wife terrifies me at night for no reason when she walks out of the bathroom with her glowing red mask. <laughs> it better do something. <laughs> this is what I'm going to see. Yeah. And that's what I tell myself. I need my wife to look younger. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, of course, we are talking about uh, uh, the article that spawned the fantastic uh, podcast for which uh, is the Best of Reason podcast. You can listen to Andrew Maine's new article in the AI edition of Reason Magazine, Why a, the AI Economy Will Bring About 0% Unemployment. Read the article, listen to the article, do whatever you need to mainstream it into your body, and then listen to the new episode of PX3 where Andrew and I talk all about it. Uh, I really, really dug that your your entire thesis was so... Uh, it could be simplified. I mean, you, you do a wonderful job in the article and everyone should read it to make sure, double check my work. But by the end of the article, I was left with the impression that the only way AI will stop humans from having work is if human appetites stop. Uh, if, 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 if demand stops and demand is, as long as demand is ahead of supply for anything forever, then uh, people are going to be okay. Uh, would, would that be, would that be a fair, overly reductive summary of it? Yeah, I, so the way I describe it to people is to say, if, if you think that AI creates efficiencies and it, we see that, that it does things, we see that it replaces jobs because it does them more efficiently, and you assume that that path is going to continue and perhaps accelerate, AI will get faster and better. And I, man, I can give you some examples this last few weeks of just new developments of what's going on, which is terrifying. And it, just that by itself, you go, well, that's just terrifying. Thank you for reassuring me, Andrew. Well, the other thing is that when you create efficiencies, it means you create uh, you increase productivity, you produce more, more things, you get more for your dollar, you get more for this, whatever. 
As you do that, your economy actually grows. The total size of the economy grows. What that also means is that, you know, if, if and I use the example, and it's, it's amusing to watch how people sort of misinterpret some of the things, which is on me to try to figure out how to better explain it. But I use the example of H&R Block. If H&R Block switches to AI, and basically if they fire all the accountants working for them, well, H&R's Block is going to have a ton of money, right? Which now they're going to, they could put into a Scrooge McDuck vault and swim in it, and it will lose its value every year, particularly where inflation rates are. Or they'll do what every other company's done in history, and that is try to make more money, <laughs> which is investing, you know, putting it elsewhere, whatever. And when you do that, you create new entities, new companies, you create expansions, and you and you hire. So there's a high correlation. There's a thing called Oakham's Law, which is basically the, the correlation between economic growth and labor. The, the, the greater the economic growth, the faster the economic growth, the lower your unemployment rates go. And this is held true for 60 plus years, whatever, and there's no reason to think that's not true. Now, what does happen is disruption. A job that exists today may not exist five years from now. But the idea here is if we have this super fast growing economy and companies are spinning up all the time to fill gaps and spin outs from other companies and whatever, you hire anybody you can. And this is what was true in World War II. This is true. It's historically you you spend efforts to retrain people because you need you need people. There will never be enough robots. There will never be enough people for a fast growing economy. And that's my point is that the future needs you. Not this future does not need you. No, the future will really, really need you. They will need everybody. Uh, yeah, and and uh, to the extent that you're comfortable sharing it, uh, you know, this is this is a very I don't want to say fraught, but a polarizing time. You know, I've, I've talked on this very show about how I'm trying to slow walk my daughters into not being terrified of AI. But it's like, you know, because my, my eldest wants to be a novelist, my, my middle child wants to be a musician, um, and my youngest is just sort of like infected by proxy about like, I don't like AI. Um, uh, I would imagine that, that making a bold assertion, drawing a line in the sand of like, uh, hey, come at me in 20 years and tell me if everybody's out of a job. Um, I would imagine that there would be many people who are like, finally, somebody's saying it, and other people who maybe would disagree. I, I get, you know, the, the pushback I get is the, I have a job as a copywriter. I don't have that job anymore. And it's like, yeah, like those, those jobs go away. And that's why in the hard, the hard part of it, the friction is you're going to have to learn new things, but the upside is it'll be easier to, and, and we've historically been doing that. If you're a copywriter, you're writing different kinds of copy. And one of the things that the first thing I tell people is, you got to figure out how to scale up your output now. You know, if you were a copywriter before, then you need to figure out how you can do 10x the amount of copywriting now in the same amount of time, because then you're still affordable and useful to the companies you work for. Um, and a big, but you do sort of see part of the value comes in. You realize, well, well, I only have so many clients. You go, ah, well, what's the real value? Well, the real value is finding clients and nurturing that client connection. And that's, you look at like, what are going to be valuable jobs in the future? Well, it's going to be people who you know people who manage or people who manage those connections and so that's where you look now as far as your daughters are concerned i'd say the thing for them to think about is that you know is to see how do they feel about adjacent use of ai for the novelist how does she feel about using it to create images to create a comic book to go along with her story you know for the musician how does she feel about using it to create a music video to go with her story yeah the uh uh uh, my my daughter, I, I've I've told this story before on this program, but in case anyone missed it, um, my daughter made a, the best counter argument for her use of AI. Like she she doesn't like AI because it scares her or whatever. But but ultimately, she said a version of Dad, I am at college to become very strong in this mental gym uh, at telling stories, and uh, any kind of support or help or uh, thing that that you know, amplifies my productivity becomes a crutch. And, and it made me think of when I was in high school, uh, I took a, a AP calculus. Uh, we did not have a book and we were not allowed to uh, use calculators. We had to reduce everything down with simple algebra to uh, answers in radians. And, uh, and uh, the only book that we had was the notes that we had to take. So our, our high school teacher would come in and just from memory, begin at one chalkboard and work his way all the way to the end of the other chalkboard. And it was your job to take all of the notes. And as a result of that kind of hard slow motion learning, 
um, when I took the class, I placed out of not just Calculus 1, but also Calculus 2. And, uh, and um, uh, I, 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 I respect peop I, uh, people who are in a learning phase, but, but I w wish they would be less afraid for in their productivity phase, like after it becomes a job for them. I, I think that if you want to go into art, right, you would be very well versed to study art in college and to learn these things because you might say, oh, well, the AI will do, well, the AI will do it, but in the hands of somebody who knows what they're doing. I've talked about this before. I took some art classes and, you know, I had to have somebody point out to me that air is not invisible. I always say the air is invisible, right? I mean, I do from, you know, physics point of view, it wasn't. But then, and I started looking at paintings and things like this. And then I under, and it changed the way I photoshopped. It changed everything for me. And when we see artists who know their tools use these things, they use them much better. And particularly as these things become more complex, you know, one of the criticisms was SOAR, that's OpenAI's image, or excuse me, video generation system, is that, you know, people in the industry are like, well, it's not very, I can't change this thing very easily. I can't change the head here or change this. I'm like, well, <laughs> this is version one. Um, but, you know, version 20 it's still going to benefit from somebody who knows our audience and an eye, just, just like having somebody, the customer relationship, somebody understands our audience or somebody with a brand coming in and saying, I can do this. I can have studio musicians recreate Billie Eilish songs and create new ones, which you might think are, you know, new Billie Eilish songs. But the moment you find out they're not, you're, you're, you're not going to be happier for it. <laughs> yeah. And, and so I think that the, the point is to say is that that steerability and stuff comes from knowing how to use a thing as a writer. We're, you know, we're a couple years away from like really convincing good AI novels. And I, I mean, like, like maybe two years or so, you know, they, and it's, it's more for it being an effort, but even still, you know, I like Stephen King drives me nuts sometimes, but I love Stephen King and, and I want to read a Stephen King book and you could have a synthetic AI put out synthetic Stephen King stories. Um, and I might read some of those. They might feel like bangers to me, you know, but some of them still, I'm still want to, I'm going to well, read from time to time, Stephen King. You know, uh, I think, the utility of the tool is one thing. Our desire to interact with other humans is uh, another. I think that there's some things for which AI art is going to be great, but still, I think it's best wielded at the hands of somebody who knows what they're doing. Like we've we've all loved the obscurest vinyl uh, uh, account on on you know wherever you get your social media, but bit, we are not alone. Many people have enjoyed it, and now there's a bunch of copycats and guess what they're not as good like there's something about the person who is putting together that account that is is selecting and honing these to be very very funny and there's a lot of people who think they get the formula oh do an old song but have a bunch of curse words in it and have it mentioned a lot of scatological stuff uh that don't get it they don't understand it uh the biggest thing that i have seen in em employing ai stuff is that it is not a replace uh, a replaceable technology right now. It is an enhancement technology. It is not something that will take your job right now. It is a thing that will give you a mech suit and make you do more. I now have the ability to do more than I ever have because of these tools. And I think as these tools get better, it's going to mean I can do even more than that, not that I am totally replaceable i mean if anything uh uh the, the 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 stuff that could replace my voice it's like uh, imagine if i'm unable to record something but i can write a uh, uh you know some kind of uh you know response to breaking news and it can use my voice to put it together and so the instant that it happens, you have my real thoughts in my real voice that sounds studio quality. Does that benefit my audience? Probably. Yes, I, I would. I would say so. If, if if speed kills in these scenarios, then yeah, you're willing to get a little bit less fidelity than than you would otherwise. Uh, obviously, the the large scale transformation of the economy is going to be something that's rocky, and that's something that Andrew spells out. But I am a a believer in his underlying argument that the scale is what the big question is the the scale and the uh, efficacy and the cheapness of this tool is is really what you're you're betting on in the idea that this is going to bring unemployment down and you know uh, uh, personally i can already see it happening in my own life uh 
I sent you a link to a YouTube channel, and this this came out was really kind of crazy. There's a I use Replicate.com a lot of times to find really great AI models to play around with, and somebody had created an AI model that did portrait size vertical images, took a stable diffusion model, then trained it to do those, and it creates beautiful images like that. And I use it a lot, play with it, and. You know, and I said, you know, I'm going to write a letter to the guy that made it. <laughs> you know, I'm like, oh, I write fan mail to people train models now. And I said, hey, like, I really dig what you're doing here. And I looked through and then I found this link to this YouTube channel. This is the guy that trained the model. He's a, he's a computer uh, computer programmer. And he actually now creates music videos, too, where he uses AI to enhance them. So he told, this is him playing the guitar, using an AI model to enhance it into Howl's Moving Castle style. And, That's amazing. And what what an yeah ma amazing mix of a guy playing an acoustic guitar who knows how to use AI who then takes that to create a engaging Im video of him playing the guitar. Um, and we're just gonna get and and, and, and it really more. is a case where it's like no we don't think that uh, you know the next Spike Jones made this video but I'll tell you what I like it a lot more than watching a waveform go up and down on YouTube. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that, that we're watching the artist who, you know, played the song in a form and kind of control the action. That, that's, yeah, we're going to get these things. And that's the thing I try to shy away from the articles trying to predict jobs of the future, which is sometimes disappointing to people. Because, it, But it's like, it's just, all we can do is look at historic thing. And I've had the, you know, I had a, the criticism I got was on ones where like, well, all you did was just sort of point out historical examples. I'm like, well, yeah, what well, else is there? That's all we know. Yeah. Anything else yeah. is uh, a little thing we like to call BS you're making up. <laughs> Yeah, uh, but uh, to, me, to me, this was this was something that I was very excited. Andrew planted a flag on, and I'm very excited, even for negative criticism of the article, because I I believe this is a line in the sand kind of piece, saying, "All right, bet right now will AI radically help or radically hurt the economy and 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 jobs, like uh, 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 employment specifically? Will it radically help or radically hurt?" And this, to me, is the, the, the exact same thing that, uh, you know, people have made arguments about the population in the past and all these other big, large scale trends. I am here and I'm excited that I can put all my chips on help because <laughs> if, 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 it, if it didn't, it would be the, the first major technology that that didn't. Uh, radically help our economy. Yeah, and I and I am open to like I said, we we work work. Th this is the thing that we you know you we we've talked about this talked about. We Matt Ridley gave us input on this, and it was this mm -hmm. this make logically that if you accept these things to be true, then this should be the outcome. And I'm open to the idea that oh no, that this is not you you missed a factor, you missed a thing there. And I you know I think the biggest weaknesses really are the willingness for people to be retrained and the effort we put into creating the effort industry puts into retraining. And there's going to be, there's going to be lags. That's the thing is how long are the lags? Yeah. But, but my bigger fear is really, you know, we we're talking about this the other day is that people who are afraid of AI progress, you can't on one hand go, man, there's so many problems world. We need to fix them. And the other hand say, here's this amazing technology that fixes things when directed, right? Yeah. But let's not use that. And you know, we we can live in a future where every high school kid gets to go to school on a campus better than Stanford. You know, we can live in a yeah. world, every kid on the planet, you know, the kid in the poorest part of the world. Like, I love watching Mr. Beast, uh, Beast Philanthropy channel because, like, I think he is, he is a national treasure and he's got a really big heart. And it also makes you appreciate, like the what a lot of people in the world, the conditions they accept and have to deal with every day. And when you when you look at like, yeah, here's here's a three-story hospital in the middle of Nepal that has no electricity because that's just a thing that people have been told to accept. And you think about, you know, what, what does AI, rapid development, innovation, efficiency, and AI mean? It means, oh, you know, those kids getting the same kind of medical coverage that kids do in, you know, UK, US or France or whatever do. And so anyhow, um, thank you for your support on this, guys. I really, really appreciate it. You know, we'll see where we did. Uh, you know, the, the, we joked about the one person I wanted to read it, read it, and said that he thought he agreed with it. And that was meant a lot to me to hear that from somebody. So that's cool. Um, let's talk about GPT-2. Oh, oh that's yes. Right. Oh, yeah. uh, just uh, that little sneaky, sneaky, 
sneaky little GPT-2. Don't mind me. Just, just a I'm sparrow, just hanging around. Just a sparrow so, flying through a barn. It's here, and then what? <laughs> Part of my my AI Odyssey, big part of it became when what happened back in 2019 when GPT-2 was first released. And I played with that and looked at that. And I read every single output. And that's basically how I became a prompt engineer, was looking at how GPT-2 worked. And then when I got access to GPT-3. So one of the ways that they try to evaluate, evaluating large language models can be challenging. Because you can have different metrics. You can see its math scores, see this, this, this. But a lot of the ways that we employ these models might be more complex, might be what? There's some models that people love that I don't. And there's models that I love that other people, because like I love models that are really good at coding because that's what I use these for most of the time. So an evaluation that has a lot of weight is basically what they do is there's a, a an org where you can go put in your models and you do a blind taste test. You ask for an output and it gives you an A output and a B output and you rank which one's better. Are they the same? Are they equally worse? One better, what, one worse, whatever. And you rank these. And then they take the accumulation of these ranks over time and they have a leaderboard and they show you, you know, what the top performing model is. Right now, the top performing model is the newest version of GPT-4, which is kind of crazy because the, the number one model in the world is a version of a model that is 18 months old, you know, which, um, which, which is a, but which is like a, a geological era in AI time. Yeah. And and I, I you know, I I. I I don't know about OpenAI's release schedule. I left the company there, you know, many, many, many months ago. So I have no no internal knowledge as far as what's going to be released when or whatever. So uh, then I don't know. I don't know what what's going on there. I make that very clear. So nothing nothing I would say should be regged to some sort. Of, I, I, you know, I, I will say from somebody totally on the outside with with zero knowledge of the product timeline. When your CEO is calling your current best product embarrassing. Uh, uh, I think we might be be uh, uh, closer to rather than further away from something else. Yeah, I mean, yeah, there there is, yeah. I mean, it, it, it's when I left, they weren't spending all day long running keggers and going, we solved it, guys. Um, yeah. So, but a model appeared on one of the leaderboard test sites and was creating a lot of hype because people were saying that it was as good as or better than GPT-4 um, and showing cases of what it was doing really, really well. The model was called gpt2 chat and people hmm. were like this is probably not gpt2 and this model is performing extremely well um i gave it you know, like one of my favorite tests to do with any model is i have a model basically give me a summary of star wars in a sentence using the first letter of each first each word has the first letter as a word of the alphabet so do an alphabetical summary oh you a, know B, a C, bull, D. oh wow yeah exactly a um, big creation dang <laughs> empire for gets. So <laughs> sorry that I, I guess I'm dumb that than... <laughs> came about because I didn't I didn't invent that eval but I I made use of it when I had to do the launch for GPT-4 because I wanted to show where GPT-4 outshined GPT-3.5 and the problem was GPT-3.5 kept getting better and better as they trained it. In examples, I was, I'm like, can I just compare it to GPT-3? Like, no, GPT-3.5. And I found, oh, that alphabetical eval, really good one. Um, Jim what? and I don't do it. Jim and I can't do it. Um, mm -hmm. uh, llamas, the Llama 370B can do it. And so that's been my test of a thing. And I, I put this on the model that was in that playground the chat GPT, the GPT two chat, it did it, um, did it yeah. really well. So uh, there's a lot of speculation what it could. It could just be like another variation of a GPT four kind of thing. There's a lot of crazy. Oh, is this GPT four point five? Is it five point oh? Whatever. Um, I don't know, but um, it's just funny now when people are like digging under the hood and like following model releases. <laughs> Well, uh, 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 real quick, I, th I think that's such a, a good example because I know that, like, as a flex, uh, in the early 20th century, uh, there was a couple of novels that came out where they tried to write an entire novel without using the letter E. And, and <laughs> yes, so uh, one of them horrible. was called <laughs> 1939, Ernst, uh, Ernest Vincent writes Gadsby is a 50,000 word novel and there's not an E in the entire thing. So I'm sure it sounds very low. To be honest, it probably reads like a ch an early chat GPT oh, thing. Oh, <laughs> I, I, I will. I, I don't know, Brian. Let's, let's, uh, let me... 
give you oh, an well, I'm sure I'm sure the current models can actually write something good, but uh, but 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 when you read the prose of Gadsby from 1939, created by a human, it's uh, shall we say tedious and laborious in some of its writings. Uh, let me see if I can find a passage of it. Um, in fact, let me do uh, since I have the name now. Let me see if I can find uh, a Google Books excerpt from it. There we go. So I'll go to books.google.com, which, by the way, is, uh, you know, books.google.com, you can't read the whole books, but, boy, is it a really good resource for just getting a, uh, a little snippet of things. Uh, and, in fact, here is uh, <laughs> Gadsby. Uh, let's see. Introduction, a bunch of talk. There we go. Here's a random passage. I shall act as a sort of historian for this small town, associating with, associating with its inhabitants and striving to acquaint you with its youths in such a way that you can look knowingly upon any child, rich or poor, forward or backward, your own, or John Smith's in your community. You will find many young minds aspiring to know how and why such a thing is so. And if a child shows curiosity in that way, how ridiculous it is for you to snap out, oh, don't ask about things too old for you. Such a jolt to a young child's mind, craving instruction, is apt to dull its avidity as to hold it back in its schoolwork. To be honest, that's not bad. That's not as obvious as I thought it would be. Yeah, I just try reading it over time. Uh, yeah, well, I, oh, I'm sure. Uh, to be honest, this, this uh, actually has to be the cure for insomnia, I would imagine, because it's so tedious. Uh <laughs> Now this small town in our story had grown in just that way, slowly. In fact, much too slowly. In fact, actually, while it looks like you're working on that, Andrew, why don't Justin and I remind the wonderful people how to keep us uh, uh, rocking here at uh, Weird Things. Patreon.com slash Weird Things is where you need to go if you want to continue to support this show. We very much appreciate you, you know, chipping in just a little bit, just a little, a couple, couple, couple slim bills to our, uh, our, our our great cause, head on over there right now. Patreon.com slash weird things. Anakin becomes chosen, defying Emperor's formidable grip, heroically inspiring Jedi kinship, liberating many, navigating oppressive perils, quietly redeeming Skywalker, thwarting unyielding villainy, wielding X-Wing yearning Zenith. Wow. So so it, it managed to hit all 26. Wow. <laughs> and, th and this was this was the new GPT-4. New... This no, this is just regular, oh, but I, I did get that out. I have that output from I'll read the one from chat. From two chat. Yeah. The... There's yeah, there there is all kinds of speculation about, you know, uh different forms. Yeah, let's of... let's yeah, let, 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 let's get into that because oh, let me the, let me give you, I'll give you. I have a GPT okay, chat bot sure. one here. Ready? Okay, all right. Anakin Go. becomes conflicted. Darth emerges. Forces grow. Helps Imperial Jedi. Kylo learns, manipulates, navigates, opposes Palpatine. Quiet rebels. Sith triumphs. Universals. Universe vacillates. War. X wings. Yanks zealously. Uh, wow! It seemed like one was more focused on the original trilogy, and the other was yeah. was taking it all the way through the. Well, I think. But uh, it was it was uh, certainly giving more weight to names yeah. uh, in 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 the second one. Uh, uh, so the hype around this is oh oh sneaky 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 open AI getting a little road test for a a new model maybe even a uh, uh, Chat GPT five that that's what they're that's what they're trying to do. Do you buy those rumors? No comment. Oh, okay. Uh, no, okay. I don't. I don't come from. A, I don't. I really don't come from an informed place about this. I would say that. I would say the thing that we have to think about is that when when they there's architectural changes when basically when you go from a GPT one to a two to three to four was an architectural shift, right? There's also Microsoft released their Phi three model PHI three model, and what made that significant was. It may have been an architectural change. I didn't really pay much attention to it, but from a, they used basically all synthetic data and basically synthetic data. Um, and they also did it in what we call, what we call like three people call curriculum training, where basically you start with a smaller vocabulary and you work your way up bigger. And that model seems to be perhaps very, very incredibly powerful for its size. 
And so we're learning that architect architecture absolutely matters, but data matters more than people had given it attention to. There used to be, ah, oh, you just give it the internet and train on that. And they're like, well, what if I give it the good data first? You know, what if I give it you know, a bunch of high quality data? And what Microsoft has been doing is saying, well, what if we give it synthetic data? And what synthetic data is, is basically model data created by another model. Instead of saying, let me train it on Wikipedia, let me have GPT-4 write a bunch of Wikipedia entries on stuff. Maybe I give it some original context and it writes it. And that gives you an extreme amount of controllability. Um, and, you know, people said like, oh, and, and we're seeing like there's some there has been some hesitations about synthetic data, like, oh, garbage in, garbage out. Like, well, well, no, I can take a calculator and I can come up with an infinite number of mathematical proofs and then I can train a model on that. And it's going to get really good at math because that's what you do. You know, and, and synthetic data isn't just, you know, generate a thousand essays. It's like, let me take a bunch of essays. Now let me create a bunch of data explaining what the plot was, the characters were, give it an example. This was the input, output, whatever. When you really look at it, like all models in the future, in my prediction, are you're just going to train them entirely in synthetic data. And, you know, we're starting to see that. So could this could be experiments in there. I literally have no idea. I have no, I want to make it very, very clear. Nobody knows anything. Yes, yeah. so let, let, let's be very, well, very I don't clear. Know nobody, yeah. nobody knows yeah. anything uh, yeah. uh, on this panel right now. Uh, uh, nobody knows anything. But, you you suspect something is being tested? Somebody's testing something. I don't even know that it's you know. Yeah. It, with people, when people ask the model, it says it identifies it, it, it identifies as GPT four. Uh, but the problem is, is uh, so did uh, Elon Musk's Grok model because they trained it on a bunch of GPT four <laughs> data. <laughs> so yeah. th there is now there's a data. Somebody released uh, a million like to something like a huge amount of data of GPT-4 training data. Like basically they took all these conversations, GPT-4, they've made it publicly available. So you're going to get a lot of models that are going to think they're GPT-4 because they're trying that's to the model that data. they were, that's, that's the data that yeah. they were trained on. That's fascinating. Uh, Boy, I, you know, I'm really curious what, what the feedback loop effect is going to look like. Um, you know, it's a, uh, uh I, I mean, the before and after of September 2021 is a fascinating, like, it's almost like a BC versus AD kind of dividing line in terms of, of actual human data versus, uh, uh, yeah, but versus you, possibly you, the, corrupted you, you, other AIs. But, 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 I mean, I think the thing is, is that, that it's not like the people who are training these things don't know what's going into the, they're, they're not, they don't know. Like, that was, data pollution was a big concern, you know, early on at OpenAI about, what happens when you know, that was the arguments for we should water market so we know i'm like well all you know is your stuff you won't know if the chinese and russian propaganda machines have been spitting out and rewriting wikipedia articles and you're just going to accept their stuff without a water market which makes by theory makes your stuff more work it makes it worse diluted um but i mean like i said is it like you you we have large amounts of historic treks of you know i i could create a bunch of synthetic data on grammar and then I could go take just books that were written in the 19th century and train a highly capable model, you know, and not worry about, you know, the the, the pollution effect or whatever. It, it's, it's a neat idea to think about when you actually break it down. Like, oh, yeah, it's not really a problem. Yeah. Well, I, I also think that there's there's an inevitability that as we continue to go forward, we're going to find out where these models want to develop and for what purposes, considering how fast they are to train comparatively to, like, let's say, building an entire database or an app or something like that like it's something that you can do fairly quickly and I, I would it would not shock me if we just see a lot of models that are just good at different things and different ways to train mm -hmm. them create different outcomes and and the the thing that helps you write is not going to be the same thing that helps to help helps you code and this the thing that makes an image or makes a uh, uh, you know the video stuff is is going to be developed things these things are going to fork to, for for specialization and uh, uh i i don't think that we can help see a lot of development in that area yeah we we see that now like if you look at what's happened with like the the stable diffusion project which originally started as uh, latent diffusion which was an open source project then stability ai came in and said we'll give you money for training if you rename it stable diffusion so maybe some people might think that it started there but uh, anyhow um there are a lot of variants of that now and you have things where you can do uh 
post training. There's things called LoRa and other ways that you can basically create your own specialized versions of that. And that's become very popular because some people want to create anime characters. Some people are using, you know, there's a thing called Control Net, which helps you kind of control regions. There's things called Comfy UI, which is a way to sort of basically plug one system into another. And yeah, you don't you don't need a trillion parameter model to do a lot of tasks. In fact, you don't want it because it's going to take up a lot of compute and it's wasteful. You know, maybe I just need a billion parameter model, you know, that that's, you know, or a 500 million parameter model that's finely tuned to what I wanted because it'll be cheaper and faster. Yeah, that was that was one of the criticisms of AI, you know, a couple of years ago is that like, like, do we really need a Lamborghini to deliver a pizza every time? And it's like, well, you know, we're, we're, we're rapidly figuring out the, the Honda Civic like we are we, we are figuring out the, 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 the little drone uh, version of this, especially for a lot of really repetitive tasks. Somebody uploaded a model on Replicate called Dragon, not Dragon, and it's basically trained to recognize dragon images. And uh, uh, I, uh, being you know, Brian, you want you 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 want to sell this to the kids? I, I, you know, I, I know, I, I know, I, I know that I, that's a allow allow me to assure you that uh, that none of the kids will take the AI as the authority on the issue. <laughs> well, <laughs> I decided to give it the ultimate test. Is it a wyvern? All right, here we go. We got Andrew presenting oh, a picture of Daenerys Targaryen. <laughs> and so dragon. It, it comes out with dragon. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't do any other tests. I didn't do a baseline test because I don't need to. I am satisfied because uh, I'm like, and I'm like, I know. I'm sure when the person trained this model, they're like, no. Some jerk was going to do that, and then they put that well, in there. Uh, they're they're, they're, they're going to put Targaryens in there. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, uh, but that's the that's the fun part is is that training models, creating things that do customized things. It's a, it's a doable thing. It's a thing that's actually not as crazy. You know, in a weekend, you know, a lot of people can learn to do that about how to create this stuff. Do it. Uh, we're going to get into a future where you're going to like shift stuff. You know, I'll give you an example is a. Uh, a A24, the studio. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, the the okay. Alamo Draft House studio. Or no, no, that, uh, it's no. not it's not the Alamo Draft House studio, it, but it, it is movies that uh, uh they, they often have, are shown at the draft Yeah, house. they have some strong correlation, is all I know. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So A A24, uh basically they you know create a lot of like uh you know, Midsummer X, uh Love Lies Breathing Pearl. There's a note that like a24 films kind of all sort of tend to look a lot alike. And if you go look at, you know, the A24 look, you look it up and you'll see like, oh yeah, the same sort of color palette, same sort of stuff that they do there. Um, uh, everything all at once uh, was yep. uh, an A24 movie. But anyhow, and it is the idea if you think about, oh, well, this is a interesting sort of thing, like the kind of the way of the future, where, you know, studios could be collectives of artists that, you know, have similar tools, use things the same way. And, you know, you see that when things, it, it is interesting too, because the more you pay attention to VFX, by the way, the more you are used to now noticing, oh, that's this studio because that's the way they do this and that. And I think that's going to be, you know, bellwether for the future. Yeah. Uh, hey, I, I, I got a, a little little science story that I stumbled across this morning, if, uh, if you guys want to hear about it. Uh, yes, uh, let's go. You, you guys remember uh, uh, the uh, Japanese uh, moon sniper? The uh, uh, the first uh, soft landed probe from uh, uh, Japan to hit the lunar surface, it landed and then just kind of tipped over and is on its head. <laughs> do, do you guys remember uh, this? Um, I do not. No. Well, uh, so so they they were very very happy uh, that it landed softly because that's a very difficult thing to do in and of itself, uh, and it's unfortunate that it landed on a 15 degree slope and kind of rolled over, but they were able to deploy a rover and take a selfie of itself on there. And the the original probe was only meant to last until the first uh, lunar night. And as you guys know, a lunar night lasts two weeks long and temperatures get like below 200 degrees negative Fahrenheit. Uh, and, uh, uh, but to their surprise, it keeps on, uh, there's enough oblique, uh, even though the, the solar panels aren't arranged in the right way, there's enough oblique light and energy that uh, twice it's been able to wake up and just start sending more information again, uh, which is pretty incredible. Um, uh, another 
the the first uh, privately commercially funded so, uh, moon probe was called Obi, and it also successfully conducted a uh, a polar landing. Uh, and a soft landing, and it landed and did everything right. However, it was never designed to try to wake up, and so as a result, whether it's because there's not as much uh, solar energy on the poles as there is on the equator, uh, it looks like uh, Obi has not woken up, but but that's pretty cool that something not even designed to wake up after a two-week sleep in, you know, terrible freezing conditions is continuing to, to output stuff. You know, I remember... You know, they would talk about it was like the Mars Pathfinder, like, ah, oh, this thing was only designed to last six months, it's last six years. What? And I'm like, all right, <laughs> all right, everybody, let's let's be honest. Like, you knew <laughs> yeah. you, you yeah. knew this when you launched it. You just didn't it, it sounds cool, you just but then you keep telling it. me that. Yeah, now yeah, you oversold. I'm I think it's like there was a, a thing in like Star Trek where Scotty admitted, like, oh yeah, you always tell them three times as long so you can be a miracle worker, which is a horrible thing to say in battle, you know. <laughs> like if you know that your <laughs> chief engineer is lying to you all the time about estimates just so he gets good performance evaluations. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh although having said that, <clears throat> I truly believe that that even though the Voyager craft were designed to uh, be able to go very, very far. There's an incredible animation. I was uh, I was reading something about Voyager 1 still, you know, being able to do blankety blank blank. And there is, if you type in uh, NASA Voyager 1 path, there is a utterly fantastic animation that shows uh, the Voyager, both either Voyager 1 or Voyager 2 departing from Earth. And you can see it intersecting directly with the orbit of Mars. And you can see it do this whiplash move and uh, and go on a different trajectory. Um, it's it's truly incredible. Uh, I highly recommend seeing uh, that because I, I do suspect that they did not expect it to be running 50 years after launch. Yeah, the Voyager missions absolutely are, they are an incredible you know, when we think about human achievement, we talk a lot about landing on the moon. It was great. First man in space. It's cool. But yeah, from a technical point of view, the fact that we do have probes that, you know, 50 years later are still continuing to go out there, which also, by the way, I would say undermines a lot of premises of things like three body problem, and everything else too. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's like, I like the whole, I just, you know, like the premise of three body problems is what they call the dark forest. Uh, hypothesis which is like why haven't we heard from anybody and it's like oh everybody's scared everybody's scared to tell them where they were because then the other aliens will come come destroy you because it's and it's like it's a really bad version of game theory and it's like well they're that advanced yeah you know there's only a finite number of stars in our galaxy you, you could send probes to all of them and know who to wipe out and it's yeah. like oh but there's billions. Yeah. like yeah but we're talking about super advanced civilizations you know we we sent two with you know 50 years after we discovered flight, you know, so yeah. a 50,000 year more advanced civilization, they're going to have a pretty good idea what's around every single star in the galaxy. Yeah. Mm. In my opinion. So suck it three body problem. <laughs> more like the bad plot problem. Yeah. No, people really love it, but I'm not, but I am just saying that's the problem that dark for it's one of these things. It's like that. It's the thing, like sending the reason article, you go, if this is true, what else is true? If this is true, what else is true? Yeah. And you go like, oh, like, yeah, like if, if you have the ability to go, you know, destroy suns and stuff and other, you know, solar systems, things like this, doing a survey of the entire galaxy is really not that hard. Yeah. In my opinion. Uh, so uh, speaking of vessels from the past, uh Brian, have you had a chance to listen to the Time Machine musical? Oh, no. Should I play it right now? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Uh, if, if you can email it, if that's easy. Otherwise, I can email it to myself. Uh, they put it up at the literally the timemachinemusical.com. Oh, great. Okay. Well, I could do that much at least. <laughs> uh, is what, what should we know going into this? Oh, Time Machine. Um, so... Brian time machine musical.com. Brian and I are both big fans of Jeff Wayne's uh <gasps> rock opera, The War of the Worlds. 1970s, early 1980s were a very big period. Uh no, time machine musical.com. Oh. There's the time machine. This one was a that's a more recent one. This one was a 1980s thing. So time machine musical. Time machine the musical.com. Okay. Time machine the musical.com. Sorry. That's all right. Here we go. Let me get rid of that. So Apparently, a 1983 attempt at 
doing a follow-up on Jeff Wayne's. It's not Jeff Wayne, not as far as I can tell, but a version of that, but it sounds eerily similar. Oh, which one should we should we listen to? Go for the first one. Tell me, yeah. Okay, here we go. This is The Debate, a musical rendition of the intense conversation between The Traveler and Philby. Yet to be voices of tomorrow and the yes to see. Here we stand, my friends, on the brink of endless roads, a machine that dances through the temporal abodes. Yet here we jest in the candle's gentle glow, hard to grasp the unseen places you propose. Tell us true, old friend, is this more than just your game? A clever trick, a story to bolster your claim. Yes! Can you see beyond the hands of time? Twisting futures, past we intertwine. Unfurl the scrolls of ages, secrets so divine. Ride the currents of the cosmos in this machine of mine. Oh, fill me skeptic of the temporal tide. Imagine worlds where past and future collide. Not just shadows on the wall or a fleeting dream, but vivid as a life flowing in a stream. Uh, so it's a very interesting translation. If you do uh, Wiener's Wiener's World, that's the Eloy oh, hippie got it. musical. Uh, 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 oh, oh, got it. Do Wiener's World. Got it. Okay. In this world of endless life, where peace like rivers flows, you stand upon a shadow tall and close that no one knows. From lands beyond our gentle hills, where different winds must grow, you wander here with searching eyes, seeking no weak law. We don't worry, we, we just dream under sunbeams that gleam. Yet we need. Anyhow, uh, Wayne had the benefit of uh, like Richard Burton doing his narration, etc. Uh, yeah, um, yeah. Sir so Richard Burton brings this deep gravitas to uh, uh, yeah. Jeff Wayne's war, musical version of War of the Worlds. Um, uh, so, so this one was kind of a, a hanger on, trying to uh, follow some of the same vibes. Uh, yeah, apparently, like early 1980s, trying to emulate the you know capitalize on the Jeff Wayne one. So, uh, the, I'm trying to find the other tracks for it. I, I have I have a terrible uh, uh, confession. I've never read the original Time Machine. I've only seen the various mm. remakes over the years. Mm. Uh, well, in that case, I went through way too much effort to fake this, Brian, because if you knew the actual plot of the book, you'd be way more impressed with what I made. With oh, Udio. my God. <laughs> uh, I, I, do, I did know that there was the Eloy. And by the way, uh, in the back of my mind, I was wondering if I, I never thought it was you. I never thought it was you, but I did. I did suspect like uh, that has some of the hallmarks of a little bit of uh, uh, Suno in there. Uh, 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 audio, audio. But yeah, okay. uh, yeah. If you want to check it out, we go to timemachinethemusical.com. I made this Monday night. Oh, that's amazing. Doing other things. Um, I didn't do the rest of it. I was actually, I had, I actually was going to go to Brian. I'm like, Brian, in the time we don't have, we should write, we should create the Time Machine musical album because we're both such big fans of Jeff Wayne's War of the Worlds. And I'm like, well, I'll just start this. And I'll send it to Brian and then see. But I was really impressed by how good Udio got. Like that opening scene sounds very much like the War of the Worlds. If you go back and listen to the Jeff Wayne um, for the Clash of the Futures, which was the Battle of the Morlocks, um, it kept being too mellow, so I had it do like a heavy metal riff to it. All right, here, let's take a listen to that. Uh, I, I, I'm so, like, I felt a little bit of a tickle. Like, I was like, this feels a little bit AI music, which, which in. in to my weapon, a full giant rod, to rescue Ferwina from this unterraced quad. I'm the time traveler, a man out of time, from the days of progress, in the world's prime. I'll fight these wild creatures, their motives are sick, to devour the Eloi as if they were livestock. Oh my god, this is amazing! Their claws are like knives. I'll not it's let them take up. the most beautiful of lives. Dear Wiener, I'll save from this cannibalistic plight as I swing my iron rod with all of my might. I'm the time traveler, a man out of time from the days of progress in the world's prime. I'll fight the Thank you. 
I'm bloodied and bruised, but my will strengthens from the thought I could lose. This vision of loveliness in a world so grotesque, I'll return her to sunshine. This is my conquest. I'm the time traveler. A man Defeat these vile creatures Their motives are sick They'll not have their wiener Upon my life I will be. Holy cow Isn't that fun? That <laughs> That one didn't sound nearly as as uh, uh, AI ish as as the other one did. Well, I, I'll tell you, Udio, in 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 however they are are running their model, is far more prioritizing uh, the fidelity of the vocals compared to Suno. Um, and and it I think it really sings, uh, pun intended, when it comes to musicals. Like I think there's a reason why that like Dune musical was one of the first things that really popped from them because the, 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 the vocal sounded great. And that was amazing. That was, that was I'm awesome. The time travel. I, I find myself humming this stuff now. <laughs> um, uh, the closing number felt very much like a very Broadway S closing number too. For uh, me. Yeah, yeah, like, uh, I just, can, can we play that one? Yeah. Okay. Here we go. Yeah. yeah sure. Uh, all right. Well, Brian, we get some copyright issues dawn. here. Yeah, we don't have to worry about copyright strikes. <laughs> Here's our worry, lost the pages, oh L.Y.'s eyes wide with wonder, oh Morlocks lurking down under, oh Time traveler's got the fears His machine hums like a drone Oh my god, that's so early 80s <laughs> Blink of light, future's fading oh. Through dystopias he's parading oh. Victorian mind bends and shivers oh. Streams of history, mighty rivers oh. Time traveler, ride the years Past the sun's long set and gone God, it sounds like uh, welcome back again to the show that never ends and all that stuff. That's so. Uh, yeah. what, what, can can you share some of the prompting that you did that 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 led you there? <laughs> yeah, I literally went into. I went back and forth between ChatGPT and Claude so I could get different takes. But I would do um, write a first. It's like do a musical and I want to do the whole thing as a musical, like the whole story. I'm like, no, that's not a musical. Musical scene by scene. So I said, write a scene about the traveler and Philby in their study. You know, write a musical version of the study and then like just have them you know back and forth spits it out so use this notation for it gave me that i did i spent zero time tweaking it because there's a couple lines in there that could kind of funny and i put that in to uh udio and i got like i would do it block by block because udio can only do 30 seconds at a time there are these little ui things right now that are a little frustrating like if you give it a really long song you have to go back and forth but literally we are weeks away months away from that not being a thing with this music generation so then with Weena, I said, oh, do a thing where Weena talks to the time traveler about the world of the Eloi and just put a subtle mention of like darkness in there. And there's a line like, don't worry now, we're in the sun, blah, 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 blah. Then for the battle of the Morlocks, like have them back. That was a hard part because it wanted to do like very sweet sort of dramatic. And I'm like, no, this should be intense. So I said, use a bit of a metal sound to it. So that's the voice sounds a bit different there, but actually the, you know, I'm the time traveler. Well, and, so and good. In a world where you can order custom singles of uh, vinyls on demand, like, could you imagine, like, imagine with a little bit of hiss and pop and scratch and imagine it's a video of, of you saying like, well, this is one I haven't seen before. It could be AI generated print on demand, you know, on the outside and you can lay it down. You can put it in there. Like we're at a point where, uh, like any good magic trick, oftentimes I ask people, like, they're like, how does this done? I say, well, how would you do it? And invariably they give the right answer followed by the words, but that would be stupid. But then like, like the opportunity to do stupid things, like fake this whole thing and record 
you know, a video where you, 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 you could do that on cassette this weekend. Yes. Oh, I was thinking that might be a business, like a cool side thing from Udi yeah. or somebody to sort of say is we will print you a cassette. Also, we'll sell you a player. Cause like one yeah. of the ways that like, you know, I, I, back in the day when I wanted to impress a girl, even after long after cassettes weren't a thing is I would buy mix a cassette player. I would make mixtapes tapes. Like I was doing this into the, into the 2010s. Um, and there is something about that hiss, the pop that it's like the quote warmth, but there is this thing of like a, a thing. And like, oh yeah, if we, you know, if you got a cassette, if I sent you a cassette tape of this one, you'd be like, what do I do with a cassette tape? But, um, it'd be very compelling. Well, and especially mm -hmm. if, if you just took the, the text, you know, uh, kind of, uh, you could get the text and then you could have a voice synthesizer, uh, create, you know, a couple different characters and it could be the kind of thing where it's like, you know, you listen to the song and then you kind of hit the fast forward and it's like, clearly there's something happening on stage. Uh, and then, you know, the next song comes up. I mean, I, I think this would be uh, the windows closing on this fooling anybody. But for right now, it's pretty wide open if somebody wanted to do it. Yeah, no, the fooling like I think we'll get past like and we've talked about this before. Like, I think part of the beauty of this is that, you know, where I a teacher right now and my kids were reading the time machine or whatever. I, this is your report is you need to come in here and you need to write it, do a song from here. Oh, that would be great. Or, uh, uh, like, like to be honest, let's say you're, uh, yeah, or or to create an a fake album. Like, if you're if you're a sophomore in, in high school, and you're asked to do a report that proves that you understand War of the Worlds, uh, I I have a feeling this would get an A plus. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, as uh, although there might be an oral part of the exam where it's like, okay, did you actually read the book? Do you know what happened in it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but it gets you invested in it. gets you invested in caring. Uh, by the way, you should read The Time Machine, Brian. It's one of the uh, I will, I will, I will. Uh, I, I, I got to finish Moby Dick first, but uh, uh, it's... Ooh, Moby Dick. Uh, oh, man, no. it's, in fact, uh, I'll make that my pick. Moby Dick, uh, the version on Audible is read by Frank Muller, my favorite audiobook reader of all time. Uh, may he rest in peace. Uh, he, uh, uh, at the height of recording the Dark Tower series uh, by Stephen King, he was in a motorcycle accident, lost his ability to mm -hmm. speak, and then uh, later on, a few years later, passed away. Uh, but... Uh, this is peak Frank Muller making Moby Dick alive in, in an incredible way. That's that's my that's my pick. That, that and Time Machine the musical. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, my pick is uh, uh, episode four of Fallout. I watched. Wait, it what? I liked it. Wait, what? 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 Well, yeah, I. Uh, uh, go ahead. A few things happened in the plot that were actually interesting as opposed to just the writer crudely dragging his characters from one place to another without me caring about why. And uh, uh, so uh, there's still one character who I don't really understand or like, but uh, uh, by and large, they're actually doing some stuff. So uh, who, I'm uh, halfway who is through the character Fallout. Who is the the uh, 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 a metal metal man uh, the with his metal maniac. plan. <laughs> so I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna tell you part of the conceit here, just to think about this. Some of the people we meet, some of the people we meet, uh, had their values and personalities shaped by the apocalypse, <laughs> and 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 at first glance, they're not likable because you go, they just don't have the traits because they come from that. I am I'm gonna tell you like. The character arcs in this thing, I I I, I hear you, I hear you, and then I kind of go, yeah. oh, oh shoot, this is I, so. Yeah, I I have a uh, 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 you know, uh, this is also an Amazon uh, 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 you know thing. I I would compare it to The Boys, where The Boys is a show where I I don't necessarily think that the characters are particularly deep but they are very fun to be around and i i you know for their they they the show is really really good at putting them in conflicts that are interesting and resolving them in clever interesting exciting and oftentimes gross out ways this shares a little bit of that dna and that at times when that would happen in the first few episodes i found it to be i didn't well i wasn't really having fun with any of the characters and so when they put them in these kind of gross out weird moments i was less charmed by them uh, uh but for most of the characters, I, I am now 
more plugged into it. I can I can uh, appreciate uh, spending time with them, uh, and we'll see. We'll see where we go. Yeah, I would say some people have longer arcs, but everybody has an arc. Everybody has an arc, Good. and and I, and there are I'm characters excited. that I I go, oh my, like, do not like this person, do not like there, and then I kind of go like. Oh, and I go, oh, this is a long game. This is a longer game than I'm used to with this kind of thing. But I kind of sort of because like my crit of the boys, which I love dearly, is it's a fucking loop now. Part yeah. of my language. It's become a bit of a loop with the characters. If well, you and, and, and they're uh, I, uh, I agree. But but, you know. Sometimes loops are fun. <laughs> yeah, well, but no, that's the thing is that, it, is that they're 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 not deep characters, right. and so yeah. it's like like that when when you when you rinse, wash, repeat, uh, you you despise Homelander, but I want to spend a lot of time with Homelander because he's a very interesting, weird sociopath to well, be well, around. You know, Homelander actually to me is actually kind of interesting because Homelander everything kind of keep continues to escalate. The idea that because we we just kind of like what he you you know when he Homelander becomes more and more unleashed. Is the idea that like to me like I'm like yeah, yeah I'm kind of curious like where does Homelander go next because to me he's he's a thing where you know whether like I want to kill Homelander okay cool that's your goal I want to kill Homelander cool that's your goal <laughs> yeah <laughs> like, all right and, you know <laughs> I got superpowers so I can kill Homelander uh, but I didn't like, I right, used cool. to be a wanderer oh, right. but then I took a, an arrow to the knee <laughs> yeah uh, yeah I am gonna I watched the entirety of Fallout uh, my wife and I and and she at first you know for her. Uh, a little cold to it and then got into it and then and it was over and we were sad that it was over because we loved it absolutely love fallout uh i know i know nothing about the video game i i know very next to nothing and there were scenes in there where we felt like this is probably a member berry you know the way this is here yeah. or little things here little references there but they did not get in the way of the story for me they just made me feel like i was watching a rich story i never felt like you know what my problem with the star wars and stuff is like literally we're gonna turn the camera over here to tell you a thing that you never asked or cared about and you know it, it's it's you know i know what that is here it's yeah. like yes uh, there's a ton of that in there i'm sure did not interfere with the flow of the story for me and they did they do clever things too at the end of it, the episodes they play these credits over um a 3d landscape thing and i'm like oh it's cool because they actually are creating little um easter eggs for viewers of the show to go watch in the next episode and i said oh this is kind of cool that like as a viewer of the show there are easter eggs there that come up later on yeah no uh, uh th oh, that being said uh, the, the finale of shogun was great first season of shogun really really loved it that, that that's probably my favorite show so far this year wow uh, okay. All right. Definitely going to watch that one. Yeah. I enjoyed Shogun. Uh, I've read the novel. I watched the 1980 miniseries. I've read the other ones. I would say that it, it is a very much a show of its times and that they, they downplayed the Blackthorn character and up and brought up everybody else, which is fine. But there is the kind of thing like, wait, why is he here? And they literally have to, in the final episode, have a character explain why he's been there throughout because he plays yeah. such an, insignificant role in this version of it as to what happens which is kind of you know it's kind of amusing to me because it literally the writer's like you might be wondering why we've had him here even though we dialed back his role and kind of erased him from big parts of the novel well we're gonna tell you why and then cool but enjoyed it despite that cool man how's it been it's been tom traveling oh it's been weird <laughs> All right, nailed it. Uh, here, I'll be right back. <laughs> Man, I wish there was more of the album to play. You back. boomed him, Maine. You got him. If only he had read the damn book. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, friends, it's uh, just me and you now. Uh, finally, we've shed the uh dead weight and uh we're here me and my very very deep voice uh first and last season of shogun oh is it not renewed was it literally just a mini series that's a super bummer no shogun season two
Season one. Okay. Wait, what? I thought for sure I'd heard they got a season two because that would be the dumbest thing Hulu's ever done, which is saying a lot. Um. It yeah it it, it says the the. Uh, uh, showrunners say that that they're open to doing a season two. Oh, so negotiations. So, will will it remain a limited series, or is there more story to tell? Yeah, um, because there's the other half of the book to tell. Um. Yeah. Um. I don't know. I think it was awesome. Yeah, it would be really weird if they don't, because I think it got huge numbers. I think it's, I think it's literally a negotiations game because this is. Um, a, I, I just, I just got back. What's that? Well, they haven't greenlit a season two of Shogun. Oh, they haven't. No. Uh, is it the entirety of the first book, though? Uh, not that I recall. I mean, it's a it's a big book, yeah, yeah. But it, but then again, it's Michener. So, <laughs> did I tell you I I was trying to search for um, a a review of the TV show? So I just typed in Google. I wrote uh, Shogun review, and uh, I love the fact that the very first thing that comes up. Uh, oh wait, it doesn't have it. Oh, don't gonna uh, here. I'll I'll actually tee it up. Um, there we go. Uh, yeah, so there was, I remember, like, there is an, yeah, that is the most of the book. There is an epilogue in there, which gives you kind of the, then what happened. Um, so. Uh, oh, where was the exact, uh, 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 it, uh, what, what happened to come up first was a 1979 Washington Post review. There we go. So the very first result, I typed in Shogun Review. This is yesterday when we were at lunch, and it came up with, uh, 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 oh, no. I changed it. That was really weird. Ah, anyway, uh, it came out with, with a 1979 review of the book that was, it was uh, kind of adorable, the way it's like uh, a disarmingly pleasant man who seems to write only uh, blockbusters. <laughs> oh, what a curse! Yeah, right. <laughs> ah, these fingers—they keep writing blockbusters. Wait, was it Clavel or or Michner? Clavel. Clavel. Oh, Clavel. James oh, Clavel. Oh, got it. Okay, then that's easy to interchange them. Well, yeah, I mean the both who—you know—the guys that wrote the big books that my dad read when I was a kid. <laughs> <laughs> so uh my my well, my favorite thing is my agent one of her other her other big client is robin cook who you know the medical thriller writer you know who was protege of michael Crichton, and all that and so she'll sometimes say well you and robin and then, like say that again <laughs> you know mention me <laughs> same, say mention me and robin in the same breath again please all right you ready to do after <laughs> yeah let me just close my door um I don't like people hearing all my good advice. <laughs> well, I'm glad that uh, that Fallout seems to be giving you a little bit more of what you're wanting. Yeah, I think for me, uh, uh, as soon as we kind of got to a point where our main character out in the wasteland had to kind of make some decisions that weren't just let me wander in the desert and uh, uh, the intrigue inside the vault kind of took another ramp up. I was like, OK, now we're doing things right. All right. You ready? Ready. Andrew, three, two, one. Hello and welcome to After Things. I'm Andrew Main, joined by Justin Robert Young. Hello. Mr. Brian Brushwood. Ahoy, hoy. So I want to 
emphasize. Um, uh, first, begin like I just just as more. I want to talk about this little show, but like I, I really want anybody listening to this um, play with AI models. Like go into replicate.com, go look at these things, and they may seem intimidating at first, but really, the thing that I'm aware of is that people who understand how these things work and people who don't, there can actually be a widening gulf because well, well, things could, happen very quickly. Could, could we maybe spell out? Because like, I, I am certain your advice is correct when you say, uh, you know, go to replicate.com and yes, it is intimidating. Like I'm, I, you know, you go to the front page and it says run AI with an API. It's like already, I had imagine <laughs> some people are like, I'm so, already lost. <laughs> okay. So let me, that's a great question, Brian. Um, and I will tell you what I mean. So what Replicate is, is it does a couple things. One is they have playgrounds where you can play with these models. So you never have to actually go in there and I'm gonna share my screen with you, okay? Okay. So you never actually have to go in there. You don't, API, you don't have to go in there and do that. So I will share, let's see. Um, wait for Replicate to load. So, um, why is this taking so slow? So replicate basically what it is, is they have a bunch of different AI models and people can go up and can go upload their own models and you can play with them. You can try different things with them, et cetera. And I realized I'm connected to a slower internet. So, um, what this means is when you log in, if you see here, you see a bunch of different AI models. Okay. Yes. This uh, is, uh, you go, this and, is, like, again, like, I'm going to tell you. Oh. A lot of these terms, I don't know what they mean. So Pulid, Pure Lightning SD ID Customization for Constraster Alignment. What does that mean? Uh, it's probably a model where you can take a couple images, combine them, and create something new. Okay, Material Transfer. And I'll show you what I mean by take a model. I can take this image of a bird, add a little image of you know this material, and all of a sudden make the bird look like that. Oh, so, so they have so it's these... like a bird and a marble, and now the bird yeah. is made of marble. Which, which in, in back in the old old times of uh, when I was doing 3D Studio Max, um, uh, that's that's kind of what you you once you had a model, you could set up the lighting or whatever and decide. You know what? What if uh, what if it was made of tin foil? What if it was made of glass? Or what if it was made of ice? Uh, and in fact, that's that's where. A lot of the, if anybody remembers the old BB Live show, that spinning BB logo, uh, there are like seven different versions of it. One made of brass, one made of whatever. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so basically it's doing that with photographs, basically, right? Yeah. So, yes, they have they're the hundreds and hundreds of models here. So I can click on here, go to I want to generate images, right? And they're going to show me here's stable diffusion. And I'll show you how you use it here, okay? This is stable diffusion lightning four step. Okay, what a lot of these names are weird. I give it and like, but we'll go to the SDXL emoji. What is this model? Well, I'm going to click on here, and it tells me one, it's warm. I have a playground here. It says prompt. I'll do a top. You know, I can say I can give it a prompt just like you do a text model. A prompt emoji of. Oh, oh, we hear while you're writing who. that uh, for audio listeners. Basically, um, you're looking at a menu almost like an app store. And you see what looks like one of those Apple, uh, uh, you know, face emoji things, um, and uh, but but uh, so all, all uh, Andrew did was click on it, and the prompt he wrote is a TDK emoji of Brian Brushwood. T O K, yeah. Uh, T O K, T O K emoji of Brian Brushwood, and and then the output because it's in a playground. Holy moly! Wow! Holy oh. moly! <laughs> Holy moly, free holy. Uh, okay, all right. Uh, uh, okay, um, uh, audio listeners, you have to understand. All he did was click on essentially album art for this thing that makes uh, 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 kind of bitmoji things. And he wrote a, a TOK emoji of Brian Brushwood. And I guess it went out on its own or it had its own knowledge set. And and it, it kind of. You're came in out the data, a, Brian. You're a bearded, in the data. It had a bearded, spiky haired dude. Wearing a, a shirt over a shirt, which is wow. Send me that yeah. picture, by the way. <laughs> yeah, I will. And uh, so I can go in there and say on a white background. Um, so there's a lot of different models here. When you use stuff, when you use a chat GPT or use these other systems, they're basically connecting to a thing like this. And it's and again, it, it sounds a little intimidating at first, but I assure you, you'll get the hang of it very this fast. Because a lot of yeah, there's well, it's free, they have a huge free tier. And then, then it costs money. Like they're basically like you could use it for free first. That's the Brian member of the white nationalist group. Uh, yeah. um, 
So this person, FOFR, by the way, uh, they believe they were the one whose model I'm using. They work for Replicate. They create a lot of great models. So this is a sticker generator. And I'll try. Oh, Brian my Rushmore. God. Oh, wow. Okay. And it makes really, you can get, you know, chat, you can get Dolly and chat in these other models to do this. But these are fine-tuned on creating what look like stickers. So you can type this in. So you'll see a thing here. Whoa. Oh, my God. <laughs> Whoa. Uh, close enough for government work. Wow. <laughs> wow. I'm try both. Uh, so uh, we're getting these really good, pretty compelling stickers now being generated. Uh, yeah, th uh, this one is like a, it's it's kind of a little bit uh, uh, caricature because like oftentimes I when I smile I leave my mouth open because I I'm told that that makes it look more genuine. Uh, uh, this is okay. That well that one's a little bit heavier than I'd like to think I am. But yes. yeah, that one that one's a little <laughs> thick thick in the midsection. Uh, uh, I hear what you're saying, but uh, but it's close. That is that is uh, yeah that is that is Brian Brushwood meets Shane Gillis. <laughs> and 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 uh, so. So, so how much how much does it cost once you decide to pay or when when I decide okay. to pay? So <laughs> this is the neat thing. So what you're doing is basically they're running the model. They'll have a thing up here. You can see it says warm. Warm means that model's already loaded onto a computer and you can use it. Okay. Oh, uh, on their computer. Yeah. All right. There we go. Look uh, at yeah, that. that's not um, bad. You can actually run these on your own systems, whatever. So if I go down here, they'll tell you um, – uh it says an nvidia a40 large gpu says typically typically takes nine i can see the generation time was 8.3 seconds so if i go over to replicate and i'm going to open this another tab here um if i go over here and i want to see what did that cost so the model i used was a nvidia a40 okay so i can go look here and i can see a40 large model that cost 0.000725 cents per second so let's do the math here. Uh, Point zero 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 seven two five so, so, times uh, nine seconds. Re real quick, barrier to entry. The first thing it did is say sign in with GitHub. Uh, I don't. I don't have a GitHub account. Um, Go create a GitHub account. Okay. Be, be, right. Just, just, just now. It's time. It's time to grow up, Brian. Okay. Good. Create your GitHub account. Right, I'm on it. I can do it. Um, yep. Okay. Hold on. Um, you you now get a pass for a techie. Now you're like legit. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, I'll follow you. On, I'll follow you on GitHub. Is that a thing you could do? Is follow people and what they're making? Yeah, you follow. Yeah, you follow people on GitHub. Follow their with the progress. You can follow repos, things they've uploaded, all that. Uh, for GitHub, those of you who know, GitHub was a. Uh, it's a. It's one of the several. There's GitLab, other ones. Uh, guy named Linus Torvald. Don't know if you know that name, but uh, <laughs> you know, Mr. Linux. Uh, one of his other major contributions was he helped create a protocol called Git, which was a way to handle versioning. Because, like, let's say all three of us decided to work on a software project and we're working on different parts of it. Well, how do we track when we update different aspects of it? Or I'm just working on it by myself and I need to roll back to an earlier version. Git keeps track of that. So you just basically save your project in Git, which is a format to save your data, and you can upload it to GitHub, which is a way to just save that if I want to share it. So when I'm working on a project with friends, I upload my code to GitHub, give them the URL or access, now they can download it, or it can be publicly available. A lot of the services and stuff that you're paying money for to use AI services are actually freely available on GitHub if you download it and deploy it, which is a lot more than just a little more to it. But Listen, I figured it out, and you know I'm part chimpanzee. Uh, so, okay, I'm almost done. The, the, uh, okay. You two keep on going. I'm going to have a GitHub account. So the use cost, the, the cost day. on this, you're paying for GPU time. So that if you look at that, it took nine seconds. And I'm using a GPU that takes cost, you know, point zero 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 seven two five cents per uh, second. So if I just times that times you know nine seconds, it's point zero zero six five cents. So maybe maybe a penny was what it cost to generate. Okay. Um, and they have also they have they have voice models, they have all kinds of models there. I love kind of exploring there to see the different models they've uploaded. There's a new model that just came up, which is basically I'll show this to you because this is kind of really cool. It is uh, story diffusion. What is story diffusion? Oh, story it. diffusion is a model that will take an input. In this case, somebody gave it a Taylor Swift photo and then a style Japanese anime, 
and then a num run negative prompts which say avoid doing this, and then a list of prompts, wake up in bed, have breakfast, do this. So then what we got oh. was a series of images that form a basically a comic book of the character going through those steps. So this is a model for comic book generation. Um, early stages, but doing sequential image to image stuff has been a big challenge. Yeah. And here we go. Okay, and so Taylor's I just I created a GitHub account and now it says welcome to replicate. It's asking me what I intend to use it for. I just said for personal use, everything else I said it asked me like what my favorite programming language is. Just everything was just other, 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 other. Yeah. Uh okay. So uh uh at this point, this is what I'm seeing now. It says welcome to replicate. Um and uh yeah. where, where do I go? Go now? click on the explore tab. Okay, explore is up here. There we go. So now I'm yep. seeing you, a bunch of... You can see that. And if you scroll down to... I, they beautifully laid this out. I want to. Okay. You know, if you want to do things like, I want to generate images. Okay. If you click on, I, I want to generate images, click yep. on that. Okay. Go down to uh, SDXL Lightning 4 step. Uh, oh, so SDXL is the, the creator, right? Uh, it's no, the SDL excels in no, that, that is, that is the title of here, lightning four yeah. step. Okay. Got it. Yeah. This is actually made by the bite dance made this. So go in here and type in your own prompt where it says a self portrait of a woman type in your own prompt. Uh, Justin Robert young podcasting from the top of a mountain. Why don't you share your, your, your image instead? I'll stop sharing so we can see. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm trying to, I don't know how to Google things. You're good. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep doing okay, what you're got, doing. Got yeah. it. Okay. Uh, J just Robert Young podcasting from the top of a mountain upon a horse. Is that too many things? A horse? Let's Probably. See. It's a simple model, but you know, whatever. Okay. Yeah. Ahead, it, yeah it, 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 it's, it's looking just for, I, I would say maybe just try my name because it may not okay. even know me. J just a Robert Young, uh, on a mountain or podcasting i'll just say podcasting okay scroll down to run okay there we go and run. here's run got it so then, right now it's you're gonna see those it's showing you well there you go <laughs> uh, not bad yeah, I mean, it's literally got a gray shirt on. I have a gray shirt on right now. <laughs> Actually, you know what? Actually, hold on. Take it's a, take, a little, take a, look uh, at a little, a little, uh, a little less swarthy than your boy. Your boy, uh, 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 you know, is a little, uh, uh, a little, a little more uh, uh, tan than oh, this version. I'm casting. Um, uh, but and again, these models are ideally you. There were ones where you can upload an image and use a reference image and say have them do this or have them do that. But the point here is. This is just a super fast model. You wow, see how really fast is. this model works. So, so, so wait, I can upload to this. Uh, a another model. Go, go look for explore. And as what you want to look for is image to image. So, if you go back at generate images, you'll see uh, you'll see text to image, text to image. Okay, go, um, I'm going to explore, mm -hmm. and then we want to do text to image, uh, generate image. Yeah, if you go down FFR latent consistency model, um, on, if you create, create, I want to create images. This one, or, or sorry, latent. Uh, yeah, it'll say. Um, doesn't look like it's on this page, but uh, let me see if I can find generate images. Well, if you if you type in. Um, if you just type in M IMG to IMG. IMG Number two, IMG, you know, which is the short form for that. Mm -hmm. We should find IMG two. Uh, oh, here's Babes two point oh. I wonder what that one does. <laughs> uh, stable, uh, stable uh, diffusion. Go, yeah, go use that one. Stable diffusion. Yeah. Y yes, use that one. Yep. Okay. All right. There we go. Uh, boy, it really. Can you is... see the sample? Yeah. Uh, is that just somebody made a doodle and then it becomes good? Yep. Whoa. Whoa. There's ones that will do line drawings to images and stuff. So so uh, if I wanted to, uh, okay, so the image I see, okay, so I could take, let's say, let's say here, uh, uh, let me look for a picture of, of Justin Robert Young. So I'll go to images.google.com. I'm going to do 
Um, I'll just type in Justin Robert Young. And now uh, we get a bunch of pictures. I'm going to take this fine picture from DCTVpedia. And uh, I'm going to click on this. And then I'm going to right click to get the address for it. Um, there we go. And then I'm going to uh, copy image link. Uh, yes, which theoretically should take us straight to the thing. There we go. I'm going to get rid of this crap. Yeah, and I'll, I'll send you a link. By the way, I found a better one to use for doing image to image. But okay. Yeah. So so uh, uh, all I have to do is take this uh, HTML link. There we go. Uh, the PNG. And I'm going to say uh, uh, a wizard casting a spell in battle there we go so um uh, and what i've done is i've taken a very old college photo of justin given two finger guns and say like the like, hey Oops. guy and then now i'm gonna run a wizard casting a spell in battle and it seems like it's already outputting oh that came out very strange no i would use i sent you a better one um that one's like i think just for doing drawings Oh, got it, got it, yeah, got it, so, got it. Okay, so so yeah. Uh, yeah, you're saying a different um, uh, model. Yeah, I sent you a, a different. Yeah, I sent you a different one. Okay, um, well, here, let me let me turn this on over here, and then I'll uh, get my. There we go. Uh, I'll open this up from Andrew. Hold on, it's coming, it's coming. Andrew Vane, image to image. There we go. So I'm clicking on the link, and I should be logged in. I, I can't believe how quickly this uh, – boy, you're uh, – I'm beginning to think there's something to this. Uh, okay. Maybe. Okay, there we go. So the image uh, – what we have is something that looks like it takes a uh, original painting uh, uh, and – okay. And you give it a prompt. Okay. So you give it a prompt. What, what, should, um, should I should I replace the girl with a pearl earring or? Yeah, make him. I'll, I'll show. You, yeah, make him a wizard. I, I have a, the image in. Okay, but 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 should I replace the original image file? Again? Yes, replace the image. Okay, got yeah. it. And there we go. So we have Justin doing figure guns, and it, oh, got it, got it, got it. <laughs> and then it becomes a wizard casting a spell in battle. There we go. And now is I'm going to click boot and run and it looks like it's booting and you can see it running on some machine somewhere else. It's taking a little bit of time to boot. And and so I notice that it has JSON over here which I assume means it gives you the code for it as well or Yeah, so if you want to run it on your own, if you want to plug it into if you built an app or you want to run connect it like basically when I projects I'm working on I go download the the API, which is an access to it, so I can basically build it into an app and run it. So you can go run it there. So they have the playground player that you like it, you crap the API. And then also you can download the model if you want to run it on your own like servers and stuff too, which is just a pain. But Okay, so I'm getting a note saying it could take a bit of time if your request is in a queue or the model is booting up. Yeah, so, so the so way here. it works is they have a certain number of servers that are set up to do this and you're in line i actually put in a request for the same image before you so you're behind me brian <laughs> in line. Well, well we'll see we'll see who gets the superior wizard <laughs> giving double finger guns with yeah. chain lightning <laughs> yeah uh but it becomes a very very fun thing to play with because you start to see there's just a lot of you know, background removal tools, in painting, you know, you paint in there, like the artwork, if you go back at the artwork for Time Machine, the musical, um, that started off as a small, like just a regular, like was a much cropped in version of what that was. And then I used the out painting and I went and I extended that in all the directions to create a much bigger canvas. Mm. The face was messed up. So I used a tool here, which was a face replacement thing. And I went in and just cropped in the face, had it make a much better face. And then I took that face uh, and put that in. And so I could show you. How, how much does it cost um, to, uh, I guess, basically, when you pay, you pay for, you know, priority access and not waiting in line and all that stuff? No, it's just fractions of a cent. I mean, it, it's just literally you're you're paying for, you know, very, it just, it just like I said, it's, it's you know, a pit, fractions of a pit cent. Yeah. All right. Well, it, uh, I'm in the queue now, but I guess both of us are. And so it doesn't yeah. sound like you're buying any kind of like priority positioning. 
No, it, it just it just literally they have X number of models set up to do it, and then it's got to load it. And so, um, you know, sometimes it'll be fast. It literally they they might only have this model running on like one server, and they're not putting it on other servers. So you're basically going to wait for or instances. You're going to wait for another instance to bring some models. Like you saw the XDX the the four step. To understand what that did, that was a stable diffusion model that was pared down to be super fast by only having like four what we call diffusion steps, where it makes like four series of predictions to then generate an image. Um, that one's used all the time. And you'll see the number, it'll say it's like 20 million predictions have been done with it. Damn. Um, but it's just, it. you start to see what the core capabilities are here. And so like I'm starting to get the, I'll share my screen with you right now. Like it's starting to generate Justin's for me and you get what it says like a seed image so basically presumably it's starting to try to load load seed like this is taking a really long time for a model that's supposed to be deployed right now um so we will see what happens there but um yeah, I'm still showing as in the uh, well I'll tell you what um uh man there was there was more meat on just this one bone than I had expected uh this is fantastic uh, yeah. What, what, after replicate, uh, what what are some other places people should poke around and play? Um, you know, there's other places that have models like Hugging Face, but Replicate's the easiest one to go use and play. But Hugging Face is is kind of the repository for AI models. You can go look there. But I just it's just not as easy to use as Replicate. It's really not as fun to go do that. And you know, just do a dive. You see a name for a thing, just go like, well, what is that? What does that mean? You know, and you can just start to dive into it and find out like what what is that thing? And that can be kind of, you know, helpful to sort of learn, oh, look you know, this. what I'm, these I'm, things I'm are. right behind you. Uh, now now it's it says using C20120. Yeah. That, that's, uh, so it's the same, like it recognizes it's the same image. They were both so what, no, what seed is, I'm going to tell you what seed means. If you go scroll down there, mm -hmm. when you go to generate an image, you can give it a number. And then what a seed will do is it will make everything turn out the same way, right? Oh, so it. if I gave it, you can give it no seed and it'll do it random every time. But if I give it the same seed every time, it's going to pretty much turn out exactly the same. Oh, that's fantastic. So if you go, yeah. So if you look back at that image generator, the first thing you did when you you're making your images using the XTXL Lightning, you can give it, if you just gave it like a four digit seed, if you wanted to, don't store the image, just store the seed in the model name. And next time you go hit that model and give it that seed, it'll generate the same thing. It's it's a bit like, um, oh, this is a dumb example, but like making a peanut butter sandwich. It's like, you don't need to you know have a copy of it, but you know, bread plus peanut butter equals that kind of thing. If you know this image plus this seed uh, with this prompt equals the, that result that you want. Yeah, there's something going wrong here because this should only take like 18 seconds to do this thing. So I think they have a problem. I'm should I should I refresh? Time. See if I can get it again or click Five reset? Minutes. Um, I'm going to click run again to see what happens. Okay. Too powerful of an image, man. Too powerful. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Can't handle it. Um, Those finger guns. Choo -choo. But anyhow, you go click the Explore tab. You'll find a lot of really cool things in there. Now, I'm not going to try this. This model, uh, I think. Well, I'll tell you what. In the, in the meantime, um, Bill Meeks is in the chat who just hit us with uh, <laughs> with with uh, this gem here. Girl with the pearl earring. <laughs> <laughs> you love to see it. Yeah. All right, so that's uh, replicate.com. Uh, man, dude, I, I guess... You can, you can upscale images. You can take video, and you can actually increase the frame rate. There's <laughs> video... Gen if you click on generate videos, you'll see some of the examples they have there. Like, I've been playing with some of the video generators. They're not, like, soar quality, but, you know, I'll, I'll share... I'll share... Actually, I'll share a link to a thing. I'll put a... Uh, a thing that I made here. Let me a second. Let me find this. Every time I scroll down through the, uh, I have to listen to every version of the Time Machine musical I made and some other project I worked on, so I get assaulted by. Hmm. Um, dun, 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 dun. It becomes very habit-forming to just start 
creating stuff. Um, let me share this. <laughs> this was a replicate model, and I gave it this, you know, I said, uh, you know, cyberpunk Blade Runner aesthetic. Wow. Um, wow. And and it just keeps on zooming in forever and ever and ever. No, or well, it, you know, thirty seconds. Yeah, it'll, yeah, it'll go yeah. Like that, but yeah, uh, it's wild because you get a cityscape and it zooms in and then uh, eventually, you know, becomes uh, another land. Uh, what looks like an office turns into a landscape and then it becomes a, a, a starship and so on. And you could tell, like, you could kind of see the logic of what it's doing. Of well, I'm here. Yeah. Oh, I, this is this is kind of close to this. I'll show you. Oh, I'll show you the freaky one I did. I did Roman Empire as one, because you know, like you, I often think of the Roman Empire. Uh, <laughs> with you, uh, what is it about know. men of a certain age? All right. Okay, so for this one, it looks like it begins with a Colosseum view, and as you zoom in, it gets a little bit scribbly and. Oh, uh, and road. it becomes architecture. Yeah. Becomes a column, becomes, becomes a etching. So what it's doing is each kind of step, it's taking that prompt and it's looking at the prompt again and trying to find what's the Roman thing, you know, like what's basically Roman architecture about it. And so it starts off here with an image of, you know, Roman architectures. It zooms in. It's trying the models using kind of the diffusion space to say, taking that as a starting point and saying, how do I refine this into something in here? It struggles. Then all of a sudden we start to see faces appear because it starts to see it's getting paradelia. It sees faces, well, you know, and, and it zooms and in. It's, it's, it, I, I'm certain it's no accident that this is very dreamlike. I mean, I'm, I'm certain that these models were built, you know, kind of on an understanding of the human brain. Um, and, and as a result, you know, this kind of like, where am I now? Just, you know, make sense of that. Uh, I don't know. It feels, yeah, it feels I, very I, dreamlike. Yeah, yeah, very much. I think that I think that it, it really is what we're our our sense of dreams for us. I think the more I played with AI models, the more I realized how much we really it really kind of replicated in an extent the way we process stuff. And a lot of people in denial about that, but like, yeah, you have a dream. Your brain, your pattern recognizer is going into overdrive during a dream, taking a bunch of random stuff and assembling patterns from it. Um, and the the outputter isn't giving you things like fine-tuned text and stuff like this. And so when you look at this, you're like, yeah, you're seeing a model. Do like, uh, okay, no, you told me Roman Empire. Oh, that let me let me give you let me do super resolution. The way the way most image models work, by the way, is kind of funny, kind of curious. Is that what they are? Is they're basically upscalers, and they're trained mm. to upscale images, but you train them to upscale from complete noise, and you say, hey. Uh, See this blur? It's actually an image of a cat. Can you keep upscaling it until you find the image of a cat? And it's like, oh, okay. oh, there's an eye. Okay, we got an eye. Da, da, da. Oh, there's another eye. And like, I think those are whiskers. Well, and, and it upscales and. Uh, oh, oh so, sorry, sorry to interrupt, yeah, but, yeah. but it's like it, it's yeah. so much like a dream. Like one of the tricks, and we've talked about this to uh, figure out with you, whether you're dreaming or not, is to read something, look away, and look at it again. If it says the same thing, it's very unlikely that you're dreaming. Uh, but but like uh, when weird stuff happens. Um, it's fascinating how your uh, one part of your brain, or I don't know, the whole brain pieces are all arguing, you know, trying to construct a, a cogent narrative. And just when when things get weird, you just roll with it and you resolve that superposition. Be like, well, must be a birthday party for some for Abe Lincoln that I'm at. Yeah, yeah, and that's these what they the diffusion is the process of taking something in a slightly blurry or chaotic state, having an AI go through it and try to discern where the pattern is, go through it again, repeating that cycle until the complete pattern emerges, which is works really well with images. The problem is, is that one of the reasons it's hard to do like, oh, I'll put a baby elephant in this hand and put, you know, a bottle of vodka in my other hand is that when you do that, you know, to start off with that kind of precision is hard. It's very easy to pull a face out and to kind of work backwards in there, but to have fine precision all around there is trickier, which we'll get there, but it does take a lot of compute. Yeah. Uh, speaking of which, uh, I, I hit run again on, on our lightning wizard, Justin, and it looks like it's taken about 90 seconds per 
hop with yeah i don't it's supposed to, to take go. 18 seconds so i don't think there's anything going on there seven yeah, seven get on seven well yeah. when we get it we'll share it uh in the meantime one uh, day uh man this this is i i like i like to I, ai tutorials with andrew main these are good yeah yeah you just it's this stuff at first it is very scary and and i don't want to be like i'm not like the guy that's telling you like oh well this algorithm problems actually really simple if you look at it this way you're like oh yeah thank you no i like literally it is is learning what to ignore you're like i don't know what that does don't know what that does uh ah, i'm gonna type into this box here and i'm gonna plus enter ah pretty picture yay <laughs> yeah. that's it and you can you can learn a lot from there so get closer to the metal play with these systems and yeah, have everybody go create GitHub accounts. You tell like, yeah, I'm a GitHub. I'll be like, ooh, you have a GitHub. Like, you're an elite level hacker yeah. here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Literally, yeah. it took only the first one third of this program for me to uh, uh, get a GitHub account and be on Replicate. Yeah. Right now you have a GitHub account. And so. Cool. Uh, well, hey, man, uh, uh, I, I think all of our pick will be replicate.com, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds good. It's been after. Bow! Nailed it. Nailed it. I'm actually going to let this keep running. I, I want to see what lightning shooting. Uh, yeah, as long as your adjusted. credit card's not attached. Uh, what? <laughs> oh, oh, because because it, it could keep on charging if you just let it keep going. Yeah, that's why I stopped. I got to pay like got five minutes of compute there, which is like, hey, listen, yeah. this, the your model broke. Oh, that's funny. Uh, well, uh. Right on. Uh, I guess I guess I got to do the rest of my to dos today. Uh, hate to hate to 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 weird and run, but uh, this, this was a good one. Uh, yeah, now, good job, good job, gang. Yeah, guys, thank you very much. Okay, here I'm gonna see drop ya. the stream. We'll see you. Bye 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 bye.